so in this series of very informative interviews we have dr sahana shetty hod endocrinology so welcome ma'am today she is going to talk about thyroid disorders so the first question that i'm going to ask is of course everybody knows this term thyroid so most of them are not aware of what it is actually and can you please tell me how important this gland is in a human body so thyroid is one of an important endocrine gland it's actually situated in our neck so the thyroid's most most important function is to release hormones called thyroid hormones and these hormones are actually released in the head in the blood circulation and from the blood it reaches several organs in the body i can say most of the organs in the body and controls the functioning of these organs so thyroid can control the function of the brain the heart intestine the kidney the skin muscle so you name it so it covers most of the systems in a body it not only controls the physiological process it also controls the metabolic rate of functioning uh, for example it determines how fast you burn your calories so the food you consume so how fast you burn it it also determines how fast your heart must uh, function or what what must be the rate of its functioning you know so it controls several physiological processes so any disturbances or illness affecting this can affect the health so what are the different disorders of the thyroid gland so uh, when you talk about disorders of thyroid gland there can be several different types so uh, we can start with probably the first thing is it can be alterations in the thyroid hormone level so i said that function of the thyroid gland is mainly to release the thyroid hormones so if there's over production or under production of these pro, uh, hormones and it can lead to problems there can also be some of the defect in the gland or abnormalities in the gland which can lead to formation of nodules or swellings in the gland it can be inflammatory diseases in the thyroid gland and sometimes you can also see cancers in the thyroid gland so there is two familiar term with uh, that is called hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism what are those so uh, i was telling that uh, the thyroid gland secretes hormones right so if the uh, there is an under production of the hormone and the level of the thyroid hormone is in the blood is low then that condition is called hypothyroidism so in the counterpart if the hormone levels are in excess the production is in excess so that state is called hyperthyroidism so what are the symptoms of hypothyroidism so hypothyroidism like i said is because of the decreased hormone level in the blood and because these hormones are important to control the rate of functioning of several organs in hypothyroidism the functions or the processes slow down so patients actually present with weight gain tiredness lack of energy low mood they can also have constipation dry skin a lot of hair loss and women especially are affected and especially those in the reproductive age group so they present with irregularities in the menstrual cycles they can have difficulty in conceiving so infertility is one of an issue and even in pregnant women uh, hypothyroidism can cause problems like it can increase the risk of abortions and other pregnancy related problem so can this hypothyroidism uh, can occur in children and how it's different than adults yeah hypothyroidism can occur in children also but uh, it's it, it's very different from that seen in adults in fact even newborn babies can be born with hypothyroidism so this condition is called as congenital hypothyroidism so uh, here the thyroid gland development and function is defective from the birth itself okay so this could be due to several reasons the most common previously would be uh, in an iodine deficient area uh, because the mother is iodine deficient the fetal thyroid is hyper functioning and present with hypothyroidism in a, in the newborn one state uh, some of the other disorders which affects the development of the thyroid gland when the baby is still in the womb of the mother the development of the thyroid gland may occur, not occur normally so they can present with hypothyroidism so this could be because of a complete absence of the thyroid gland or it could be because the thyroid is not situated in the normal location so if you look at the embryology of uh, most of the organs in the body it's very complex uh, so thyroid actually develops at the level of somewhere near the tongue and then actually slowly descends down and during this process of descending down it also undergoes further development so any abnormalities or uh, mal functioning or mal programming you can say during this process can actually affect the uh, development of the gland and the gland can arrest somewhere so you can some of these patients actually come the swelling in the base of the tongue inside uh, oral cavity or somewhere higher level there can be a swelling that's basically an abnormally located thyroid it's not only abnormally located it's also not functioning normally so these children can come with hypothyroidism and also yeah. sometimes there can be defects in the synthesis and functioning of the hormones so that can also lead to hypothyroidism now this is all about actually the causes of the hypothyroidism in children but what is most important is that uh the fetus when it's still in the utero the brain this a development of brain happening and this development continues till till a child is 2 to 3 years old 
and this development of brain is dependent on thyroid hormones. So, if there is deficiency of hormone during this period, then the child can be mentally uh, challenged, they can have low intelligent quotients and this is also if you diagnose late and treat somewhere, if the treatment starts after one year, two year uh, of the onset of disease, then the uh, mental retardation or a decreased intelligent quotient cannot be reversed. So, it is very important to diagnose immediately at birth and start treatment appropriately. Uh, so, now it is indicated that every newborn child is screened for hypothyroidism because you are going to then prevent development of mental retardation. Okay. And there are also children who come with uh, not growing well or not doing well in the school, uh, not able to concentrate or not able to remember things. So, this also could be signs of hypothyroidism in children. And how it can be diagnosed and treated? So, uh, Diagnosis is actually quite simple, there are very uh, newer developed assays which can measure the thyroid hormone levels mm. in the blood. So, by measuring the thyroid hormone level, we can diagnose these conditions. So, treatment would be because uh, there is availability of this hormones which are deficient. So, I said it is a disease where the hormones are low, right. So, uh, these uh, hormones are synthesized in the form of a tablet that is the thyroxine and then that is given as a treatment. Mm. So, we are replacing the deficient hormone and because we are replacing the physiological form of the hormone. This treatment is also not associated with any side effects and it is very over treated or under treated. So, mm -hmm. if you are giving it a correct amount then uh, if that is going to reverse the disease. So, earlier you have mentioned about hyperthyroidism. Yes. So, what are the symptoms of hyperthyroidism? So, hyperthyroidism is something which is opposite to, uh, hyperthyroidism is something which is opposite to hypothyroidism. So, the hormone levels are elevated in the blood, you know. So, this could be because the gland is overstimulated and is producing more hormones or it is having an extra growth or a nodule which is producing more hormones. So, this uh, because the hormones are high, uh, every process it is controlling gets overstimulated. So, they present with opposite of hypothyroidism. So, like it present with weight loss, they have increased functioning of heart, they will have tachycardia or what you say increased uh, uh, what you say you can feel the heart beating louder then patients can have tremors, sweating, a lot of menstrual confusion, irritability, anxiety and also again the fertility and the menstrual cycle this can be seen as a part of hyperthyroidism. So, what are the treatment options for hyperthyroidism? So, for hyperthyroidism uh, the causes can be different. So, it can be the gland which is overstimulated or it could be a nodule which is producing more hormones or sometimes some inflammatory process. So, uh, the, 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 the final treatment depends on the diagnosis, but then the main modalities of treatment would be medications which are called antithyroid drugs, the radioactive iodine therapy which is isotope related therapies for the thyroid gland and finally, you have a surgical options for the treatment. So, what are the concerns if an individual presents with a thyroid swelling? Okay. So, many times patients come to us complaining that they have noticed a swelling in the neck. So, what, what are the things we look for in these patients? Okay. So, first thing we look for is uh, whether the gland is functioning normally. So, whether the hormones are produced at the normal level. So, these swellings can be associated with the high hormones that is hypothyroidism or can be associated with low hormone which is hypothyroidism. That is the first thing we check for and treat accordingly. The second thing we see is because it is situated in the neck and neck is a very compact structure and lot of important structures go through. So, they can be nerves, they can be blood vessels, you can have inter, uh, you can have esophagus, trachea, so a lot of things are there. So, these wellings can actually compress these structures and cause problem. For example, if it is compressing a nerve, they can present with moist change, if they are compressing esophagus, they can have difficulty in swallowing, airway is compressed, difficulty in breathing. So, these are the second thing we look for. The third thing we look for is what is the nature of this swelling. So, it is a benign condition or is it a malignant like a cancer. So, these are the three things we look for when somebody presents with the next swelling. So, one last question I would like to ask is how thyroid cancer is different than other cancers? Okay. So, uh, again when you say thyroid cancers is a very heterogeneous state because there are different types of cancers which we can see in thyroid gland. So, uh, it could be cancers which are arising from the thyroid cells like uh, the terminologies like papillary thyroid carcinomas, follicular thyroid carcinomas probably it is little complex to understand, but there, uh, it is mainly restricted to the thyroid cells itself. Sometimes you can have the supporting structures developing malignancies or some lymphocytes or inflammatory cells which can present as malignancy or cancer there and sometimes it, it can be a spread from cancer somewhere else. Mm. Okay. So, uh, we will restrict to mainly the cancers of the thyroid gland per se. So, these cancers, uh, cancers are different from other cancers because they are usually very slow growing and they are not most of the times they are not very aggressive tumors. Okay. But it is important to diagnose and treat early because if it is treated in a very early stage then this uh, patient's uh, the survival or the life is almost similar to a patient who 
without a disease you know so the survival is going to be very very good if it is diagnosed early and treated even in those patients where you think that uh, there is a little bit spread or the tumor is large still there are different newer modalities of therapy available these patients other than surgery can be offered radioactive iodine therapies can be offered several different biological therapies and even there are chemotherapies with very few side effects which can be offered so these treatment not only improve the survival chances of these patients but they also improve the quality of life so the, the message would be that uh, if, if even if there is a problem if diagnosed early and treated uh, it, it they can have a normal life so thank you so much ma'am you have taken time for us in the in your busy, busy schedule and uh, give a very informative talk about uh, the thyroid disorders thank you so much thank you everyone